Could the way you feed your kids negatively impact them for years to come? Take a look. Every parent knows feeding your children can be challenging. Kids reject, refuse, even throw their food in protest. But a new body of research suggests that it is the way we feed them that will affect eating habits into adulthood. And some of the feeding styles that parents might commonly fall into are the food police, the hunger avoider, the comforter slash rewarder. So which type are you? And could your feeding habits be damaging your child's future health and diet? Dr. Dina Rose, the author of It's Not About the Broccoli. I love that title. She's here with us, joining us for more insight into parents' feeding habits. So, welcome, Dina. Thank you for joining us. And tell us how your upbringing led you to study how we're fed as kids. Yeah, well, I grew up in a completely food-obsessed home because my mother was always battling her weight. She was always on one diet or another, sometimes successful, sometimes not so successful. And then when I was about five and a half months pregnant with my daughter, my mother died of obesity-related illnesses. So when my daughter was born, I just became obsessed, <laughs> really obsessed with the question of how do you teach kids to have a good and happy relationship with food? I wasn't as worried about the nutrition as I was about her happiness and her habits. And I knew, because I'm a sociologist, that if I focused on teaching her the right habits, the nutrition would sort of come along for the ride. This really <laughs> hits, hits home because we all deal with this with our kids. You know, are you feeding them right and, and you want to do the right thing and you, at the same time you want to love them and make them happy and see that smile on their face, it's, it's a slippery slope. Yeah, and it's, it's sort of terrifying actually when I saw those titles up there because I was thinking, oh, I do that, oh, I do that, I do that. I have an eight-year-old and I have a 10-year-old and I feel like whatever I'm doing, I'm doing it wrong. So I do some of these elements. So I'd love to start out, I know the first thing you put out, yeah, those are my kids. Okay. Um, Lovely family. Thank you. Yeah. But um, the first topic I know, the first kind of label people have is the hunger avoider. So tell us about that and tell us that pattern. So I just want to start by saying we all sort of suffer from all of these types in different amounts. So if you see yourself in, in one of them, like don't panic or freak out, right? We all, we all are susceptible to them. But the hunger avoider is the kind of parent who is exactly what it sounds like. You don't want your kids to be hungry at all. And for people who have sort of a a minor case of being a hunger avoider. They might do something like feed their kids a snack 10 minutes before dinner, right, and ruin that whole dinner time because they don't want their kid to be hungry. But for parents who have a severe case of being hunger avoiders, they're gonna feed their kids the child-friendly foods that their kids love, the foods they demand, and they end up narrowing their children's palate of foods because they feed the same things over and over and over. I have to say I'm a little bit of a hunger avoider. Yeah. I try my best not to keep it the same foods, but the way I knew that I really fit this pattern is that every single tote bag or purse I have has some gross Ziploc bag of like <laughs> spoiled carrots or crackers or something in the bottom because I'm always carrying snacks. Gotcha. And yeah. so I think yeah. a lot of parents are really afraid of the idea of their kids being hungry at any point. And that's probably a habit we need to break. Oh, you know you're a hunger avoider if you'd rather give your kids a really junky snack than let them be hungry. But here's the thing. Sometimes kids use the words I'm hungry because they want to get that good snack and they might not be that hungry. But if we feed them all the time, the second they say they're hungry, we're actually teaching them that you should never be hungry. Mm -hmm. So let's switch that around and start saying, oh, you're building a good appetite. That makes it a positive instead of a negative. 